Hiya and welcome to Build. We are live from London today with a singer who cut her teeth in reality television, but she's here to talk about her new single. It's Kagi Dunlop, everybody. Hello. Kagi, welcome to Build. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Good. I'm really excited to talk about your new single, It Will Never Be Over. So mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about your singing career so far? Because a lot of people know you from TV, but maybe mm -hmm. not from your music. Yeah, I guess, well, I started out in TV and I never really imagined that I'd go into music. I always loved it, but I didn't actually have the confidence to do it. So the TV detour was that... Um, they wanted me to sing on the show and that kind of like hooked me in. And then for a while I was just writing a lot and wasn't really like feeling ready, I guess, to fully commit to it. Cause mm -hmm. you know, music's quite scary. You're putting yourself out there in a big way. Absolutely. Um, and it was really when I moved to LA that I started writing a lot and working with people in a way that encouraged me to fully develop who I was as an artist. And then it was important for me to come back here and kind of be that person. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there a moment where you kind of were like, right, I need to give this a go now because you're sick yeah. and you weren't quite confident. What was kind of the turning point for you? Um, there was definitely a few turning points, but the, the, I remember there was a very pivotal moment in LA when I'd been working so hard at the studio and was just really trying to get this project together. And some things felt like everything was sort of going wrong. And there was this switch in me that I sort of said to myself, I was like, even if this never happens and nothing ever comes of it and it, like the whole industry completely rejects me, I still really want to do this, like regardless of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when everything shifted because I was like, I'm actually in love with doing this. I'm in love with the process of making music. I love everything that it gives me on a in a very like deep way. Yeah. So actually once you detach yourself from the outcome, you're kind of free from that a little bit. So yeah. that was probably a big moment. And I suppose when you're just doing it for yourself, anything that happens afterwards is a bonus. Any kind of praise you get, yeah. any success after that is just on top, right? And I think a lot of people share that experience with something that they love and the journey towards getting there is that just before it starts going well, it goes really badly. <laughs> yeah, oh, And absolutely. then it's like the universe kind of testing you going, how much do you want this? <laughs> and you're like, I really want it. So, yeah. And you've been gigging around London uh, lately. How's that been going? It's been going really well. So that was something at the beginning as well that was such an issue for me because I got so scared performing because I, I never did singing growing up. Mm -hmm. It was like something I did when I was totally alone in the house and like no one was in the house. <laughs> So for me to put myself out there and that way was always so nerve wracking. I mean, like for weeks before performing, I would get, I would be up in the night, I would get this anxiety. And so that was a massive hurdle because I was like, how am I going to be able to do this as a career yeah. if I'm so scared of the most important part of it? But again, that's like something in the last couple of, even perhaps weeks, that's just... I'm just not that afraid anymore. What was it particularly that you were afraid of, do you think? Just the generally the idea of going out and not knowing necessarily how things were going to be received? I think so. I think it's that there's an element of control, of like wanting to control yeah, yeah, yeah. how Definitely. things are going to be received. And because it's so personal to me, it's like if you keep it safe and no one can harm you, but then if, as soon as you're out there, like, but you have to put yourself out there to get that kind of reward. So... Yeah, I don't know. It was a tricky one. There was a, there was a lot of, about it that I just found very nerve wracking, but I don't so much anymore. But again, it's like you have to practice these things. You yeah, have to, you have to just keep doing it. There's no magic pill you can take to suddenly not be scared. You just have to. Sometimes try. it works in your favor as well, though. You know, the like fear. yeah, yeah, because it can kind of be endearing sometimes, and it humanizes you. Um, and I think people respond to that if they know that you are kind of putting yourself out there. Yeah, and sometimes it's like you want to prove yourself wrong. You know, if you've got a voice in your head telling you totally, you can't do something. Totally, yeah. That is, can sometimes be like a motivating factor, right? Well, I think that that is probably, you've just like hit the nail on the head, is that I had this voice in my head that essentially is fear that was trying to like keep me safe, but in doing so was stopping me doing the thing that I really love. And the more you walk through that and embrace it, the smaller that voice gets and you realise that it's actually just there but shouldn't be ever controlling the situation. Um, and so you've decided to stay independent uh, when you're making your music. Does that give you a lot of creative control and things like that? Do you feel like you've been able to be more hands-on because of that? Yeah, and, and in 
In many ways, it's a harder route because it's all on you. Oh, so, certainly, yeah. Yeah, so every decision is on your head. And with a label, at least, you kind of can spread out the responsibility. And the blame a bit. And the well. blame, all the blame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if it doesn't go according to plan, there are many people that you can blame. But with the way I've chosen to do it, it's kind of all on me. But I think coming from my background where it was very much, I was an extension of another brand to a degree, that I, it was important for this to be as authentic as possible and to at least get it to a certain place. So I'm like, this is what I am, this is who I stand, this is what I stand for. And then people come in that way rather than trying to mold me to what they think I should yeah. be. Yeah. Because there was a lot of that. Yeah, of course. But I'd, I'd never really thought about that, but I suppose being on a show like the one you were on, yeah. there's a lot of kind of constru constructed reality that mm. isn't necessarily how, say, you actually are, how events actually played out. So this mm -hmm. must be a chance for you to kind of take back some of that control, I guess. Definitely. And also, I think from that, a lot of people that I spoke to in the industry would overthink everything because of my background. And that was something yeah. that I found a bit of a hurdle. But it's been good, again, because if you do get things to a certain point on your own, it it's builds your confidence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been, you know, then comes across in my performance and everything like that, so... Uh, you mentioned in the early stages of like your music career, writing things and writing about personal stuff. What sort of things do you write about in your music? I tend to draw off um, the same person quite a lot. Okay. I think it was probably the time that I was... It was the most I've ever felt about somebody, but then it was the most pain I've ever been in too. Yes. And that actually ignited probably in many ways my singing career from the early stages because I actually had stopped doing music for a point. I was like, I don't think I have what it takes to do this. I'm like going to focus on acting and other things. And then I had this experience with this boyfriend. And then afterwards, I was so sad that I just kept writing and writing and writing. And then they became songs. And then that was sort of cathartically how I processed that heartbreak. So... I guess this song is still about that person, <laughs> but I'm now moving on to a different um, sort of different subject matter and just trying to be as honest as possible. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my songs start from poems. That's something I've done my entire life. And then I kind of take that into the studio and I'll be like, this is the idea. This is kind of what I want to base it on. And let's see what happens. Is that daunting for you kind of going into a studio with really personal what started out as poems, then eventually lyrics, to kind of go, this is ha like my true feelings, can someone help Str me make a song out of this? Strangely not actually, that, the studio has never threatened me. That's, n that's like my safe space, that's my happy place. It's, um, cause that's a, you know, an opportunity to just create something and mm -hmm. everyone's having to be a bit vulnerable. There's, it's, it's a very weird dynamic working in a studio because you go in and you meet someone you've never met before, you have a little bit of small talk, and then you're bearing your soul, like, in yeah. 15 minutes. So, but I've got used to it now. Yeah. Do you feel like, in a way, being on a show like Made in Chelsea kind of prepared you for that? Because obviously a lot of that is opening up about your personal life and kind of letting cameras into your world, in a way. No, it's a totally, it's a really different kind of emotional response. I think that felt very much like an invasion. And this is like, this is how I want to convey how I'm feeling. Not, and it's not for the, I mean, both end up being for the public domain, yeah, but yeah. It, the difference is like, I'm in control of, of the music and it's, for me, it's creating something beautiful out of something that might be quite painful rather than, I don't know, the yeah. former. <laughs> I think mean, we all know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, kind of you, this is your ability to take charge of a situation rather than someone else. Yeah. Shining a light on it in their own way, I guess. Because it's the same, if you were, you know, if, if I was acting in something and I was drawing off a personal experience, that's one thing, because again, it's like it, in my control and how I'm choosing to express it. But when you're feeling like you're being slightly cornered, it's, it's not the same. I don't think, yeah, that didn't agree with me so well. Uh, you touched on this a second ago, but coming off Made in Chelsea and then going into your music career, mm -hmm. um, how did you feel like having done that helped or hindered your career? I think, I think it's a double-edged sword. I mean, mm. I definitely wasn't ready in the, in the way that I am now to do music then. And I think, you know, there's such different industries. And I think there were a load of opportunities that were 
available to me, but they didn't feel quite right. And again, I became very puristic when I left. I was like, I want to just like shed all that former stuff and just do things my way. And a lot of people said, you have like a, an opportunity now and the window's going to close if you don't like seize mm -hmm. this immediately. And me being very stubborn, was like, I'll wait as long as I ha need to yeah. until I'm ready to do it my way. Um, who would you say are some of the inspirations for your music? I'm very inspired by Lana Del Rey. In, in her music and also everything she's sort of created as, as an artist and her image. And I think there's a lot of vulnerability to her, which I connect with mm -hmm. um, because... I'm confident as a person, but I'm not that confident yet as an artist. And that the two are merging. Um, but she's probably my most, yeah, my idol. That's a really interesting choice from what you've just said, because I love Lana Del Rey. I, I love that, like, she's very, very honest in her music. Yeah. And she tells you what she wants to tell you about her backstory mm. and who she is. But she doesn't tell you everything. Yeah. Like, and she holds Which on to certain things for herself. Like, yeah, she nails that in terms of, like, you understand who she is as a person but there's still a lot of mystery and i think that that is kind of quite rare these days to create definitely most people just want all the information about everyone now and i kind of like a bit of mystique she she's very mysterious she's the sort of person you see her on a red carpet and you're like oh how did you get there yeah but she's kind of timeless in that sense. Yes, yeah, well. absolutely. Um, we've heard a few songs from you at this point. Uh, is an album on the cards, do you think? Yeah, so next year is kind of going to be a big year for me, I think. And just getting it really... Because at the moment, I'm working with so many different people. I, I still ha And I still have that freedom to know like which direction I'm going to take it mm -hmm. in. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a traditional album first. It's going to be something slightly different. Can you elaborate on that slightly? <laughs> I don't think I can right now because it's all... For reasons. Huh? For reasons. For reasons, yeah. yeah. But it's just, it's going to be a project that's sort of curated by me in the way that I want to do things. Okay, and is this single that you're performing today, is that part of that project? No, this is kind of like just this single that I'm putting out. This is just world. floating it out there, yeah. like, stay tuned. Yeah, exactly. Just And then next year will be... Some exciting stuff. Uh, well, on that note, um, we're going to see Kagi perform her new single, It Will Never Be Over, which is out this Friday. But before we see her, um, let's have a little look at who is coming up on Build in the next week. You've heard her talk, and, and now it's time to hear her perform her new single, It Will Never Be Over, which is out on Friday. This is Kagi Dunlop, everyone. <laughs> Through our way was it 
Closer, but 